This videotape will show you a proper procedure for setting up and machining a workpiece on a vertical band machine. The vertical band machine is a versatile machine which can be used for sawing, filing, and polishing. After viewing this tape, you will be able to write down the safety procedures for setting up and machining on the vertical band machine, and write down the steps for setting up a vertical band machine for sawing, filing, and polishing. In sawing, filing, and polishing operations, flying particles present a constant hazard. You should therefore always wear your safety glasses and or face shield to protect yourself. Rings, watches, and jewelry can get caught in moving machinery, so remove them before you begin to work. Keep your sleeves rolled up above your elbow. Never use rags around the vertical band machine while it is running. Use a brush to remove chips from the work piece. When working with small or hard to hold work pieces, always use a pusher block to protect your fingers from the blade. For this demonstration, use a piece of one quarter inch thick machine steel, which will require outside machining and removal of stock from the inside. The first step is to go to the job selector and find the information necessary for setting up the band machine. You will need a precision blade for the job. The saw pitch for one quarter inch thickness should be 10. The smallest radius in this project is 5 8 inch, so you will use a one quarter inch width blade. The saw velocity should be 175 feet per minute. With this information, select the correct blade stock and cut it to the proper length. Weld the blade into a continuous loop and grind the weld area to the proper thickness. Now set up the band machine. Select the correct guides for the blade width you are using. Since you have a one quarter inch blade, use a one quarter inch guide. The sizes of all the guides are stamped on them. Clean the slot in the guide holder. Place the guide in the guide holder and set the guide to its correct position by using the guide setting gauge. Place the other guide in the slot and use the guide setting gauge to set the guide for saw band thickness. Repeat the same procedure for setting the lower guides. Install the blade in the band machine by following these steps. Start the machine and set the variable speed to the lowest position. Place the transmission in a neutral position by moving the high-low selection lever. Shut off the machine. Open the upper cover door to expose the upper band wheel. Use the hand crank to lower the upper band wheel a few inches in order to allow the saw band to be placed in position. Open the lower cover door to expose the lower band wheel. Place the saw band on the upper band wheel and move it into place around the lower band wheel. When the saw band is in place, turn the hand crank to raise the upper band wheel to provide some tension on the blade. At the same time, place the band into the upper and lower saw guides. With a slight tension on the band, turn the band wheels by hand to move the band through the guides. Continue turning the hand crank until you have the proper tension on the band as indicated by the tension indicator. Again, turn the band wheels by hand and check to see that the band is tracking in the guides and against the backup bearing. If the band is not tracking properly, Loosen the hand wheel lock on the upper band wheel and adjust the tilt control on the upper wheel. 
tighten the locking wheel on the tilt control, and close the upper and lower cover doors. Check the band speed indicator to see if the transmission should be set to high or low range. Since you need a velocity of 175, the transmission must be set in the low range. Position the transmission lever. Turn on the power and crank the variable speed control until you have the band velocity of 175. Place your workpiece on the work table of the machine and adjust the upper band guide as close to the work as possible. Choose a starting point on the workpiece and force it into the saw blade with a slight pressure. Remember, if the workpiece is small and there is a danger of getting your fingers too close to the blade, use a pusher to force the workpiece into the saw blade. Turn and guide the workpiece to cut the desired contour. You may cut directly on the layout line or to the side of the line, depending on the nature of the work or the part you want for finishing. In this demonstration, cut on the outside of the lines until you have completed the entire cut. When you have completed the cut, crank the variable speed control to the low end of the range on the speed indicator and shut off the power. You do this to allow the next operator to change the transmission high-low lever without turning on the power for changing band velocity. The variable speed must be in the lowest position to change the transmission gear shift lever. In order to make inside cuts, you have to drill a hole in the workpiece large enough to accommodate the width of the band. In this case, you can drill a 3 8 inch diameter hole. Place the transmission in neutral and open the lower and upper cover doors. Loosen the tension on the band by cranking the tension control, which lowers the upper band wheel. Remove the band from the machine. You now cut the blade using the blade shear. These cuts should be approximately one quarter inch to either side of the weld so that only about one half inch of the blade is removed with the weld. This also allows for only one weld in the blade loop when it is re-welded. Place the sheared ends of the blade together and grind them in preparation for welding. Insert one end of the blade through the hole in the workpiece and proceed with the band welding procedure to make a continuous loop. Mount the band on the band wheels and adjust it to the proper tension. Reset the machine to the prescribed band velocity. Proceed to cut the inside dimensions of the workpiece, cutting along the inside of the scribed line. Follow this procedure when you want the outside finished part. When the internal sawing is completed, Remove the band from the saw and cut it with the blade shear. Roll the blade into a coil and store it. Do not re-weld the blade, since the next operator may have to start out with some internal cutting. The workpiece is ready for the next step in its production, which is filing on the band machine. Filing on the band machine is used to improve the finish of a workpiece or to finish parts to a given dimension. When you set up the band machine for filing, you have to remove the saw guide holders from the upper and lower guide posts. Open the upper and lower cover doors and replace the saw guide holders with holders designed to guide and support a file band. Lower the upper band wheel to accommodate the file band length. Use the type of file band recommended on the job selector if that is possible. For this job, use a one half inch wide flat file and a band velocity of 145. Place the file band over the upper band wheel and lock the ends together.
by slotting the rivet head in the slot and aligning the band. You also have the option of joining the ends of the file band while it is on a table. However, be careful when using this method not to kink the band, which would make it unusable. Place the band around the lower band wheel and then apply correct tension as registered on the tension indicator. Turn the band wheel by hand to move the file band through the guides and check for proper tracking. If the band does not track, correct it in the same manner used for the saw band. Close the covered doors and set the file band velocity to 145 feet per minute. The selector lever is in the low position. File band should never be operated faster than the speed recommended in the job selector. Now, file the workpiece to the desired size and finish in this manner. Place the workpiece against the file band and apply a slight pressure while moving it back and forth across the face of the file band. Do not stop in any one place. This will produce a notch in the workpiece. Watch the layout line and continue filing until the desired size and finish has been reached. You can also use file bands to machine internal surfaces by placing the file band through the holes in the workpiece before connecting the ends of the file. Use the same procedure for inside filing as you do on outside filing. Polishing operations may be performed on the band machine by changing the guides to accept a polishing band. Polishing bands are manufactured in a continuous loop and cannot be cut for internal operations. Use the same mounting procedure for the polishing band as you would for the saw band for external cutting. Band velocity for polishing is higher than that used for filing and also depends on the grit of the polishing band. Polishing removes a very small amount of material, but provides a very high grade finish. In review of this videotape, you should now be able to write down the safety procedures for machining on the vertical band machine. You should also be able to write down the steps for setting up a vertical band machine for sawing and filing both internal and external dimensions and for polishing. This videotape has shown you some of the versatility of the vertical band machine. When properly used, it will perform many operations both economically and efficiently.